Hello, everybody. Um, I've got uh, 10 minutes to tell you a story, something hopefully very different, very compelling, uh, different to what you might have heard over the last one and a half days. So I'm going to start by introducing Yusuf. Yusuf is from Syria. He's currently a refugee in Lebanon. And in the few hours before he had to flee his hometown where he grew up, he could only take a few things. And when he got to Lebanon, he was asked, what was the most important thing that he grabbed, that he took with him, that is going to make his life easier as a refugee in Lebanon? And that one thing was his mobile phone. This allows him to, uh, to go up on a hill in Lebanon so that he can get signal to call his father, who is back in Syria. It allows him to listen to the local FM stations in French, which is the language of instruction in the high schools in Lebanon, which is what he has to learn now because he only speaks Arabic. And it also allows him to uh, not only take photos of his new life, but to look at photos of his old life, including the family that he has left behind in Syria. What we have in the world, ladies and gentlemen, is this phenomenon where one billion new mobile phones will be released very shortly. He's not got a smartphone, most of the world don't. Uh, but we know that phones are going to be distributed. We know that they're going to be mostly in developing countries. And we also know that they're going to be in the hands of young people. So how do we convince Yusuf and the millions of young people out there that they have in their hands a very powerful device, a very powerful device that if we just gave them a little bit of skills and training uh, in the form of fun, fun learning, they would be able to maybe solve a little problem in their little communities in order to have a wonderful life. This is the Youth Mobile Initiative that we have started at UNESCO. It just started this year. Right now, I'm, I'm just doing a lot of traveling, talking to potential partners, introducing this, uh, this initiative, trying to see if it's going to work. And um, this is where we, are, where, where we are piloting. I've got some nice photos. I have stories behind all of these photos, but, uh, but not enough time. This is what we want to do. In four years, including this year, we want to empower a minimum of 25,000 young people particularly young women who are severely disadvantaged in this area. And as I look out now, it's, it's mostly men, and there's always that small proportion of women. All right? We only work in developing countries as a UN agency, and we want to give these young people not just the skills, not just the technical skills. We don't want to tell the kids, this is, uh, this is learn computer science, uh, because that's only going to appeal to only a fraction of the kids in any class. What we want to tell kids is, here is a fun way to learn history, poetry, physics, or even coding if you want to, so that you can actually start to solve some of your problems. And we'll try to measure ourselves by the number of apps that these kids upload. And these will be apps for sustainable development. UNESCO is into sustainable development. You may know that the world is moving from Millennium Development Goals to the new Sustainable Development Goals. And we want to make sure that young people have got the power to contribute to these Sustainable Development Goals. This is a photo of Martha from Kenya, one of the young entrepreneurs that we're working with. This is how we're going to implement. Uh, we never want to duplicate. We walk into a country, we try to do national assessments, and we try and find out who are the best people in this country that we can work with, that we can put onto our stage, the UNESCO stage. We've got enough muscle. We've been around for 70 years. We've got a brand that's trusted by 200 governments. And, and, and they will believe us if we've done the vetting of who is the best to work with in these countries. We then partner the appropriate type of trainers, and then we train the kids. And then if one, two, and three can be thought of as creating the supply of programmers, we want to simulate the, stimulate the demand by holding competitions. When we first started this initiative, it was quite difficult for us with all of our search skills to try and find where are all of the world's mobile app competitions. As all of you know, at any one point in time, there are hundreds and hundreds of competitions. But you couldn't go to one place to see the competitions by country, by region, by the language that you spoke, by the thematic that you were interested in. So on our website, we've got this first global list of mobile apps competitions. You can hit the website now, and you can see languages and hopefully be able to do a search. Starting from next year, UNESCO itself will also host mobile apps competitions. And we've got a very exciting competition. We're in talks now with several of the governments, and I'll highlight that uh, later. This is from our mobile literacy classes in, um, in Pakistan. 
this is how we're going to measure ourselves. In four years' time, my boss is going to ask me, Abel, what did you do? And I want to be able to say to him, 25,000 young people with 5,000 apps that are out there that are being bought and sold, possibly, but at least solving some local problems. This is who we are trying to target. These are, these are our ultimate beneficiaries. For the youth, we're trying to try and target the unemployed or the underemployed youth. In all of the countries we have gone to, there are these millions of youth. Some of them are very smart, but they couldn't get a physical seat at the universities in their country because there just weren't enough universities and there'll never be enough universities for these millions of kids. But there are tons of youth NGOs and our primary partners are the ministries of youth and the ministries of employment. We also want to work with the ministries of education to somehow, uh, we, we, can't, we can't figure this out yet, somehow try to get this fun learning into what is ordinarily not fun learning in school, when you go to school. Peter was talking about how they try and do learning in the Asian countries. It's, it's not really fun. I, I doubt you'll get one kid in Asia that says, I love going to school. And we also want to try and target the teachers, the principals, and, and ministries of education. Because we're UNESCO, we're an intergovernmental agency, we're obliged to make sure that every program that we do um, has to comply with all of these extra dimensions as well. It puts a huge extra burden on me, but that's because we are inclusive. We make sure that any type of child who learns in, in all sorts of different ways has got a program that they can even probably design for themselves and, and take at their own pace because we've catered for them. We've catered for their geographic areas, we've catered for the marginalization that they may be facing in their country because they're a minority language, or they're disabled, or they might be like Yusuf, an inter, a, a, a displaced person. This is my colleague Lydia. Uh, she ran a major workshop in, in the newest country on earth, South Sudan, uh, in Juba, uh, in partnership with Zane, one of the many telecom companies that, that we're talking with. This is where we are deploying at the moment uh, in 2014. This is uh, all of the countries um, I, I've, I've traveled to, I've been to, to talk to all the major partners there. In all of the countries, I, uh, as, as UNESCO, we go and approach the governments, we approach the mobile telecom companies, we approach the, the many initiatives, the, the youth NGOs, the apps developers, the M Labs, the co-creation, iHubs, etc. All of these stakeholders we try and meet in order to make sure that we have the true picture before we start to make our own recommendations. Finland, Qatar, China and Brazil will be hopefully the host countries for a major oceans competition that we are launching next year. So I don't know if you know um, um, UNESCO's uh, Oceanographic Commission, the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission. There's a little side story here, it's the IOC. Uh, they're kind of famous for the tsunami warning systems that are in the Pacific Ocean and in the Indian Ocean. One of the smaller initiatives that they have is called Argo. It's, it's this uh, buoy that they throw into the ocean and it collects a whole lot of data. So after 10 years, we have a tremendous amount of data. And, and, and one of the initiatives under Youth Mobile is we're going to take a subset of that data, we're going to openly license it with Creative Commons Zero, we're going to have an open API, and then in the Youth Mobile competition, we're going to ask the young kids, build an app, and I'm not going to actually teach you how to build an app, Rovio will do that for us, or Khan Academy, or Code Avengers will do that for us. But the purpose now of building the app will be to slice and dice this data. Data that was previously only available to the world's best scientists uh, who were maybe presenting it at the IPCC and climate change meetings. But now we're trying to give young people the opportunity to use the data that UNESCO is collecting to try and benefit themselves. And, and I'm hoping to launch this in the four countries um, next year. This is um, how we could work together. This is the, the main things that I go around to all of the countries. We're not a funding agency. We need, we need funding from major partners so that we can expand this, so that we can become truly global. We're not the experts, the be all end all in how to teach young people. The, the experts are the partners like Rovio, et cetera. And we also need technology. Um, if you might have noticed in all of our photos, every one of those kids was holding a feature phone. They weren't holding a smartphone. A lot of what we're trying to do will only work once the network operators get out there with 3G, 4G, and once all of the kids have smartphones in their hands. 
My last slide, ladies and gentlemen, are my contact details where you can get in touch with me. Thank you very, very much.